and welcome to Top Channel 101. And today we're going to be making this Mars establishing shot using Blender. We're going to learn a few techniques like how I animated the car without rigging it or doing anything uh, too difficult. Project files are going to be on my Patreon page, Gumroad and my YouTube membership page. Okay, so this is how quickly you can animate a car like this, especially that is not going to be viewed from a close-up distance, like uh, what we are seeing here. Even for close-up shots like this, it's, uh, you, you, you can get away with it. Uh, this car is not rigged at all. The only thing I did is uh, animated the tires with a two keyframes. If I go to the timeline, you can see that uh, I animated the rotation X so that the tire is rotating forward. And then on the Z to make it seem like the car is bumping into the ground, I add animated the Z location of the tires with a modifier. So if you have a keyframe, you can add a noise modifier. So if I turn that off, you can see this is just rotating forward and nothing else but uh, when you turn on that keyframe it just bounces up like that now if you look closely here this is what i'm doing here to make it seem like uh, the car is actually running into rough terrain uh, like that but it's not really i wanted to do this really quickly i had two hours to make the entire scene uh, that is modeling the the car and uh, then the terrain and then animating the car so i didn't want to do any rigging on this car here you can also add some keyframes uh, so that the car is also a bit bouncy uh, like that so what you can do is add an empty like this and just make sure you parent the tires now to that empty like that and uh, then parent the chassis uh, to to the empty as well control p and now this is free to move and now if if i want to move the entire car i select the empty but uh, this chassis is free to move give that its own keyframe so i can just can add like two keyframes like that control tab into your curve editor and uh, you can look at uh, the rotation let's see this is rotation x yeah we can add you can isolate that using shift h zoom in a bit and go to the modifiers and add a noise modifier uh, that should give it a bump like that but that's too rough so i'm going to scale this down slow that down and uh, the strength as well so you can see we get some bit of rotation we can copy that and paste it to the I think that would be the Y rotation, so I'll paste that there, change the phase a bit. Now you can see now we have uh, a nice car animation that uh, without any rigging or doing anything too difficult. So yeah, now to have the car actually go on the terrain, uh, we can add another empty to this. The tires and the chassis are all parented to this empty, so I can parent that empty to this empty, control P. And that, that will be the main controller of the car. So if I want the entire everything to move, I can do that. So then what you do, you go to the top view of your entire scene and uh, add a new curve object. Go into it mode, let the curve that exists there. Draw your own. Make sure you have surface turned on because we want to draw on the terrain itself. So I can start drawing on the surface like this. And you see that uh, the path will just follow the terrain we have when drawing you can even increase the detail so i can come in here draw again a path increase uh, the detail by reducing uh, the error down that gives me much more detail but it's also going to make my car have a very very rough animation so you don't need that much detail and uh, you will have to remove any points that are, are going above ground like that so you can now Come in here, find where the path starts, drop the car at that point, give the, the main empty a constraint, follow path constraint, and uh, the path I want is this one we've just drawn. Uh, the car will jump to a dis different distance, just move it back and uh, move it above ground. If you play back and nothing happens, just select the empty and uh, under constraints, make sure you have animated, animated path. Now, if you hit play, you can see the car is following the path we just drew going over all the terrain but uh, it's too fast slow it down you just select the path and uh, go to here and change the number of frames you want so if you want it very slow you can put something like 600 and uh, that should should slow down uh, the car but uh, it's not facing our path for example here it's not really turning you just if you want it to turn you just select the empty go back to the constraint and Turn on follow path and I just select the right direction. And you can see now our car is following the path. Yeah, so that's how I did the car animation. And for the smoke, I just did 
a particle emission and the, the particle is just a sphere here like that and a texture with uh, layer weight uh, because I just I want to create a smoke simulation without doing an actual smoke simulation I've done a, a bunch of tutorials about this but uh, basically you add some noise you create some noise like that it's it looks unmated because I'm using object coordinates of a different object so as these balls are moving the smoke seems to also move as well so we have that everything else we can just switch into the time lapse uh, so that you can see how I did that okay so now we can start working on the vehicle you can see i started by blocking out the model uh, i wanted a specific look of uh, a kind of a sci-fi uh modern looking vehicle uh it basically a mars rover and uh, I, I started by importing in a character just for reference for height reference so you can see the modeling is very basic this is basic hard surface modeling uh, using a few different techniques I, I didn't want to be too detailed with this vehicle you can see here i'm just adding some extra details like growth simulations and uh, basically what you do you just i created a, a plane uh, with a bunch of subdivisions and uh, selected parts where i wanted the seams of the cloth to be and uh, use that as a pin group i've created a lot of tutorials around uh, this type of modeling it's, it's a good way to add extra detail without doing a lot of work uh, that's why you see i'm also adding these bags i wanted the vehicle to look functional so i'm adding these extra things uh, that uh, look functional that's why you see i even added a side bag that was missing uh, just to make it look really functional that is actually a, a vehicle in service and uh, yeah here i'm just making the tire again i'm just using basic tool i'm adding i'm creating a plane and then using an array to kind of duplicate those uh, ridges or i don't know how to call them but uh, it's a very very simple way to make a uh, tires and then uh, just uh, wrapping that using a curve just uh, deforming that with a curve object a circular curve object and uh, then turning that into uh, a tire like that I wanted to keep everything simple because I knew most of the detail will have to come through uh, the texturing, which I also kept minimum. I don't like adding too much detail when less detail is enough. Yeah, here I'm just jumping into Substance Painter to do some basic painting. Because I use Substance a lot, I've set up a few of my own uh, Substance Smart Materials so I can just dump them on and I'll quickly uh, get a fully textured model with, within a few minutes. Yeah, you can do this in Blender, but it would take you way, way much time other than doing it in a professional software like Substance Painter. Uh, so that's why I did it uh, directly in Substance Painter. And uh, as you can see, most of the details that I didn't add using Blender, I'm um, adding that right in here. Or just to make things faster now i can see the model is simple we have not done too much work but uh, it still looks good in my opinion and i can see i'm just going in and borrowing some of the detail and uh, putting it somewhere it's already textured so i don't have to go back in substance painter to texture that <music> when it came to the environment all i did was uh, subdivided a mesh uh, and then added this sand texture to eat and uh, i'm using some height maps i've shown how to use these techniques in a bunch of different tutorials you can check my youtube channel if you don't know how to use that but i'm basically using a displacement texture and a, this and a height map to add that detail those mountains or hills without doing any sculpting at all and i can move uh where the the, the height map detail is by just uh, uh using uh the coordinates of an of an empty as the coordinates of the height map or displacement texture and uh, yeah you can, i'm going back to the the to the sun texture and just uh editing it around you can see that haze or dust mist whatever you want to call it it's just a simple plane and i like to keep things very very simple if i have if i can get away with it so you can see instead of using a volume render i'm just using a gradient uh a curved gradient so that if i do a, a 360 pan i can see the the that dust from all angles and uh, the rest is just adding these uh rock particles i think i, I did a tutorial on on things 
on assets you ha you should have in your library and i included these rock assets uh these rock pebbles so you can easily just throw them in they're easy to make but uh, you don't have to make them every time you just have to make them once add them to your library and uh, you're good to go whenever you want something like that you can just pull it out of your library and you are good to go yeah so that's most of it here i'm doing the animation part that i've already shown how to do uh, it's a very very simple trick of animating things without really uh, rigging them fast because if i decided to rig this it would take me a lot of time and uh, this project i think took me about four hours to make uh, that's including creating the entire scene and then making the car texturing it and everything so i didn't want to spend too much time on something like uh, rigging the car and uh, most of you wouldn't even want to watch a tutorial on rigging a car. So I wanted to do something quick. And I think this dirty trick was enough for me. And it did exactly what I wanted. Yeah, um, I also used some uh, some botanic assets uh, for, for the close-up. You see me do it here a few seconds here. Uh, because uh, I saw that in the foreground, I didn't have enough details. So I brought in some assets and uh, some botanic assets. And yeah. Now you can see now I'm just animating the tires to make them look like they are, are running over rough terrain like that, bouncing around and everything. So with dust, rocks, pe rock pebbles jumping around, it's going to be hard to tell that uh, uh, they're actually just bouncing around, not really uh, moving on rough surface. So yeah, that's, yeah, I knew I could get away with it. So I, I just went with that again, just adding details and details. Um, Yeah, here I'm just showing how I did the smoke simulation. I started with this kind of crosshair a thing for the particle system but i changed it to a sphere because i th I, th I saw that uh, a sphere gave us a, gave me a better better results for the smokes for this for the dust particles by the way if you're going to use this technique with cycles you have to increase your transparency samples quite up uh, otherwise you're going to see dark as uh, artifacts in your renders uh, if you're rendering a lot of transparency uh, planes that are overlapping that are behind each other so yeah, here yeah, I'm using the botanical library to import in some trees and everything. Yeah, thank you for watching. If this is the type of content you like to watch, I'm making epic scenes like that. You might also be interested in watching my previous scene that I did in an earlier video. So links are going to be in the description. Again, project files are going to be in the description.